that line again. There is no one else like you. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys, just really quick, um, I want to just tell you, because I know there was a lot going on this morning, but there is a sign-up sheet to help with the children's program on Wednesday nights. You only have to be here from 4.30 to 5. All that entails is just helping serve the food that's already been furnished through Kathy, and then just clean up the mess afterwards, which this week it was throwing away all the paper stuff. So I need somebody to sign up for this Wednesday. They don't have anybody. Dan and I did this week. Um, it's, I know a lot of people work, so not everybody can do it because that's the time people are working. But those of you that can, um, please serve the children in this way and the leaders because they only have so much time to be able to do this. Amen? Amen. All right, you guys, we're going to go to Acts chapter 9. And uh, while you're going to Acts chapter 9, um, um, I want to talk about um, Saul. You guys know the story about Saul. And so this is where he's going to meet Ananias. But So we're going to start in verse 10, Tim, once I get there. But I want to set it up for you because Saul, um, we know that Saul persecuted the church. Saul uh, persecuted Christians. That meant the church. And so Saul would persecute and he would kill. He would put in prison. He would destroy families. And he thought that he was doing it uh, all in the name of religion all in the name of that when in reality it wasn't um, it was control and it was just going out and shutting down the true anointing the true move of God and so we know that Saul became Paul but uh, the way like Tammy y'all just did this skit about my life you know leading up to the point of well all the way into the future hallelujah um, but so for Saul you know, he was very educated, he knew the word, he knew the law, and then they all had to, of course, live by the law. So they didn't like Christians, they didn't like Jesus followers, and so his job was to destroy them and to get rid of them. And he had a legal right to because he was given um, the papers to be able to go in and do this. So he was doing this. Well, he was on his way to Damascus. And while he was on his way to Damascus, all of a sudden he got knocked off his horse and he got put to the ground because the Lord appeared before him in light. It was so bright that it blinded him. And he said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Because you see the church is Jesus Christ and they're thereof working through his people, working through people. Amen. When we become born again, we get a brand new spirit. And with that, we get the spirit of the living God now that comes in and joins our brand new spirit that is without sin. And so therefore now, these people were running after Jesus. Because Jesus had already came by this point. He was already put on the cross and the church was growing. So they were persecuting the church. And so um, what happened is he got knocked off his donkey. He had an encounter with Jesus. But that encounter caused him to be blind because he was a man of pride and, and he, he needed to be taken down to a place where he realized that something was greater than he was. Amen. Because he was lifted up so high in the world, lifted up in what he was supposed to do, and therefore he needed to be blind. What happened then? He had to be led by the people that he actually was leading. He had to be led because he was blind to the place that he needed to go in Damascus. But this time, he didn't go in. He had no ability to persecute because he was bound up with blindness. And it was for a purpose, a greater purpose than what any of them knew at the time. We live on this side, and so we know. But there's so much about it that we don't know because the word of God is full of mysteries, full of mysteries. So in verse 10, it says, Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And so Paul's already in, in Damascus, blind. He can't see. He's not eating. He does not like the condition he's in. 
He knows that he met the Lord. He knows that this is a greater power than his flesh power and his mind power and all that he is. And so now, now in Damascus, a certain disciple named Ananias, to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, here I am. And so the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for the one called Saul of Terrace. For behold, he's praying. So here's a man that had an encounter that caused him to pray. Sometimes the things that we go through in life causes an encounter in our lives. To cause us to pray. We may not be blind in, in the things of the flesh, but we can be so blind in the yeah. things of the spirit. But all of a sudden, <laughs> something happens in our life where we decide that we cannot get out of it of our own devices. That we can't make a change. That we have to somehow bow low Amen. to the name of Jesus. Right. And Saul found that out. Amen. And he was praying in Damascus. And so the Lord came to Ananias and he said, Arise and go to the street called Straight and inquire the house of Judas for the one called Saul of Taurus. For behold, he's praying. And in a vision he's seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him so that he might receive his sight. So now Ananias is having a vision and the Lord is speaking to him to go to this man. At the same time, Saul is having a vision that Ananias is coming and he's going to lay hands on him. Isn't that so cool? Because our God can do whatever he wants to do all at the same time. He can be working in my life while he's working in Reva's life. He can do whatever he wants to do because he is the great I am. And then Ananias answered and said, uh, Lord, I have heard from many about this man. How much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem, Lord. Remember who this man really is? Hello? <laughs> and, they, and here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. All. So now Ananias is saying, Lord, do you know who, who you're asking me to go see? You're asking me to go down, down the road and knock on a door where it's really nasty outside. They don't take care of their stuff. And they're the crazies of manistee. You want me to go knock on their door? You want me to go over to the nursing home over here and spend time? With people, God, that, that have been forgotten? God, are you sure? Do you know that these people have problems with bodily functions and it kind of stinks in there? You want me to do what, Lord? You want me to go to River of Life down the road, that crazy pastor that used to ride motorcycles and shoot pool and win? <laughs> yes. Don't you know who she used to be and you want me to go to her church? No, I want you to go to my church. Because this is what he said. But the Lord said to him, go. For he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. So I want to stop right there. That's my main verse today from the Lord. Go. I know I'm kind of loud, ain't I? Go. For he is, he's, he's, he is a chosen vessel. How many chosen vessels are we looking past? Because they don't look right, they don't smell right, they don't dress like, and they have a really bad past. Or they have a really bad present. But yet God is telling you to go witness. God is telling you to go bless them. God is telling you to go to them. And we're like, ah, that's not you, God. Mm -mm, you wouldn't want me to do something like that. They are definitely not your called material. 
Saul was not his called material, but Paul was. Saul was persecuting him and his very name and who he was. God knew this, but he was still his chosen vessel, and he had a plan for him. So he needed to take him low so that he would know that he is not God, that Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, is part of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so the Lord has now called us all to be disciples. And he's calling us to reach out to people. But we're afraid to because we're afraid that they're going to come out in biker clothes and they're going to reject it. When in reality, that is a costume. That is a front that everybody stay away from me. You don't want to mess with me. I'm in leather. You don't know that that is a front. I'm telling you, there's bad people in leather, but there's bad people in dress clothes. That's right. That's you can't right. go by what you see. You have to go by faith of what you believe in the power of the risen king, that there is resurrection power that's yeah. working in you right. and me right. in order to make a difference in our community, our workforces, our friends, and our entire environment, and in our world and in our nation, yeah. one at a time. But God, you don't know what this person did to me back in 2003. I'm not going to go to them. God, they hurt me. They used me. They took my money. They, they used my family. You want me to pray? You want me to go to that person? That person left me, divorced me, cheated on me. You want me to what? Just pray for them? I don't want to pray for them. I'm mad. It's my right to be mad. They did bad things to me. Yes, but guess what? They did horrible things to me, Jesus That's Christ. Right. That's right. And I said, forgive them, That's Lord, right. for they know not what they do. They do. Amen. You don't know that God doesn't have them at that lowest point in their life right now. Right. And it's your prayers that are going to help them cross the line in the sand and live for Jesus. Amen. To see what they have done and never expecting an apology out of them, even when they're transformed. Because once you forgive, nobody owes us anything. Jesus doesn't expect us to keep coming to him once he has forgiven us of something that we have confessed, something that we have done. He says, okay, now there are consequences to some sin. Absolutely. But what about us? Look at the grace. If it wasn't but the grace of Amen. God, would you be here, David? That's right. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I have a 34-year-old nephew who's passing because of consequences. He's still here. We're seeing him tomorrow. Amen. He shouldn't still be here. I pray in Jesus' name that he has a plan when we get down Amen. there in Tennessee. That's right. Because I want to see a generation changed. Yeah. I want to see addiction be yeah. gone. I want to see the stigma yeah. of how we see people gone. Yeah. So that we see what God says. God told Ananias, go. But God, don't you know? He said he is a chosen vessel right. of mine. He's going to suffer in serving me because we all do. But he's chosen. He's going to speak to the Gentiles. He's going to change the world. Not only will he be used in his generation, but the generations to come all the way to 2022 right. at River of Life Ministry on October 30th as the word comes forth and deliverance is attached to it. And love is attached to it. And hope is attached to it. Because if God can take a saw and turn him into a Paul, then he can take an Elsie and change you into an Elsa. <laughs> it's the only thing I could think of. <laughs> yes, he can take a Joyce and turn her into Pastor Joyce. And he has. And he's poured his spirit on me. Do you know that when Ananias went to see Paul, and I'm just going to skip ahead. And what he did is, not only did he pray that the scales be taken off from his eyes, 
But he prayed that the Holy Spirit, that he would be filled with the Holy Spirit. See, when Saul got knocked off his donkey, he wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit yet. It took Ananias going to Paul, Saul, lay hands on him, believe that God had a call on his life, believe that God had change in mind for his life, believe that God wanted to use this man who he was petrified to go face because he had a piece of paper and the authority to annihilate him. And God chose who he had the authority to annihilate to impart the Holy Spirit into. That's right. So that the call that God had for him would come into fruition. Because yes. apart from the Holy Spirit, you can have a call on your life all you want. That's right. But until you get empowered by the dunamis power yeah. of the Holy Spirit, we are powerless. Amen. Everything we try to do on our devices... Everything that we try to do. I don't know what God wants to do when I go down, Dan and I go to Tennessee. But I'm going with no expectations other than that his word that he will put in my heart at that very moment That's right. That's right. will be fulfilled. That's right. That's right. That I will speak the oracles of the Lord regardless of what I see. That's right. That I will speak life regardless of what I see. If I am led by the Holy Spirit in any way, I'm going to do it. Amen. Oh, it's easy. That's your nephew. No, I haven't seen my nephew since he was a little guy. He's only 34 years old. I don't know where he stands. I know my sister, and I know my, what my sister says, but I know that he's still here. So I'm wondering where the Ananiases are in our room. We all have past and people in our past and are we brave enough to go to the people that God, you know, God is sending you to go to? Because you know what? They know you know them. And you're going to bring hope to them. A prayer. Not a Bible thumper like Lori did up here. <laughs> One of them Bible thumpers. No. Grace, yes, that's right. truth, that's right. spirit, yes. and love. Because he says that he will fill our mouths yes. with words and wisdom in the very moment that it's needed. Amen. Amen. Rob, God has not changed his plans for you. You think you're on the shelf. You're not on the shelf. There's more to you than what you see. Amen. You were seeing it. Amen. And now you step back from it because you're not too sure God still wants to use you. And God says, my plans haven't changed. What about yours? Amen? Amen. He will fill your mouth with words and wisdom. He's going to change lives. Because of your testimony, not just your testimony, but because of who you represent and how you represent it. You don't have to follow anybody but Jesus. He'll do it. Amen? <laughs> He's so good. Amen. Pammy? <coughs> God says it's time to step up. He says, you, you're like this. You're like, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. And somebody goes, stop. And you're like, what? What? And the Lord says that you're a bulldozer. That you can bulldoze things out of the way. If you will just not let someone stop you. You don't have to fight for position. You already have it. All you have to do is just keep forward going as a bulldozer and push the darkness out of the people that you've been praying for by truth and light from Jesus. From Jesus. Amen. Cheryl, your time on the bench reading the paper is over. God says you know that he has called you to do more, but you are worried about it. You're worried that you'll let him down. You're worried that maybe other people won't follow or that maybe somebody's going to give you a hard time. God will give you what you need to accomplish what he's put in you. Amen. You have to just step out in faith and just be all in. And if you have a bad day and you don't feel like you're all in, that's all right. It's like Elsie's word, brush off the dirt and step and be all in. Don't let one or two bad days take you out of the game. 
says the Lord. Yeah, that's good. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Corinne, God has gifted you with grace and love. You love hard and you're faithful. The people that you love, you are very faithful to. And you love the Lord. And you're faithful to him the best that, to your ability. But God is going to give you resources to do more. Because not only will your children know the name of the Lord, but your grandchildren will know the name of the Lord. And you will see a difference in your generation and in your marriage. Because you are faithful always. David. You too. You don't like it. You want to just be a free spirit? And you just want to be free? You are free. You're free indeed because of the spirit of God in you. And he says sometimes it's hard for you to let go of some of the stuff that you've enjoyed being a free spirit. But God says if you will just trust him, he's going to give you a platform. Woo! A platform. Yes. And I don't know what that platform will look like, but you'll be able to reach the people that are free-spirited. Woo! That, yes. that don't understand what the true spirit is all about. Do you understand yes. that? Can I give that to you today? Because that's for you. Oh, so God. don't lose hope. Don't worry about all this stuff. Just be faithful to God. Just be faithful to God. That's all he wants. That's all he wants. And you got a big family all around you to help you. Amen. Amen. We, we, we the people, Amen. we the church. Amen. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. So God says, who are the Ananiases in the church? Who will go? Who will go? Who will go talk? Who will go to who I want you to go to? Not who you want to go to, who you're comfortable to go to, because this will cause you to change. Because Ananias went from fear and judgment on one part, but he was obedient to God because he knew he was greater. Amen. That fear and judgment, he was still fighting. And he thought, man, this guy can kill me. And he could have. But he trusted God more. And because of that, he lived. And because of that, the scales were taken off from off of his eyes, from Paul's eyes. And Paul became a follower of Jesus Christ to the end. Amen. And he was bold, as bold and courageous from how he was in the world to the things of Jesus. So don't think that the Lord is going to take your personality and erase it. What he's going to do, he's going to tweak it, and he's going to show you how to use it for the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Because every personality is important to the yeah. kingdom of heaven. I can't go to certain people. Yes. But, Alin, you can. Yes. I can't. And I'm not going to try to. There was a day I felt like I have to do it all. I don't have to, and neither do you. But be willing to change what you think you're supposed to do. To what he's called you to do. Be willing. I have a friend I love a lot, and I said the other day, I said, that was your plan. That was everything you planned. And now it looks like everything for you to have that plan is going away. But how about God's plan? Will you trust him? Will you let him take your intelligence and your personality and your life and mold it to what you were purposed for versus always fighting over here to be in what you think that you're supposed to do? <laughs> Yay, God. Amen. When he called me, I just sat down and cried because I knew it was him because nobody else would call me by him. So I knew that it was him. And he confirmed it over and over again. And it was hard for me because I had to submit and still have to submit totally to God. And every one of us want to not submit. We want to do it our way. We have a, a heart to want to submit, but our flesh gets in the way and we just want to tweak it and have it work the way that we want it to work. When you follow Jesus, you've got to be willing to change your plans which I've learned to do over a period of time now because I have found out when I don't, God's trying to do it, I find out I should have. I don't like it because I have a plan. This is what I'm supposed to do. Everybody that knows me, 
And a lot of that is from God. But when I'm operating in it in Joyce, I have to be willing to yield and go with him. Because I trust that he's going to keep me out of trouble. I trust that he's going to take care of my heart and my brain. I love the word I got today. My days aren't numbered yet. God will let me know when they are so I don't have to worry about stuff. But I have wisdom to take care of me and take care of my body and take care of the church. All takes the wisdom of God to do all of it. All of it. Ha! Right, David? David told me today I irritate him sometimes. <laughs> oh, it didn't bother me because he did it in such love. He wanted me to know how much he appreciates me. And if I didn't irritate him, he wouldn't have changed. Because it took guts and it took boldness to speak into this young man's life. Because like anybody else, we can have a mindset which is called strongholds that we don't want to change. And when somebody comes and tells you that this is what the Lord is saying or doing, it's like, ugh, I don't want to do it. And Ananias, go to him. I don't want to do it. He's going to kill me. He can kill me, God. Yep, but he is a chosen vessel of mine to be used to bring many into the kingdom of heaven. And that's what our God does with a life. Amen? Yeah. So, I'm just going to give you some lyrics. I'm not going to do a closing song because I understand we have to do something different. So I have to yield. <laughs> we sang the song, You Are Great. And I realized it was a little bit hard for people to sing because it's so tweaked by... The anointing and the way that it was saying but God deserves the glory and the honor and we lift our hands to him and we bless his holy name you deserve the glory God and the honor and I lift my hands and bless your holy name for you are great you do miracles so great there's no one else like you there's no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There's no one like you. There's no one else like you. In that song, it just repeats it really over and over. You are the miracles of God. Right where you're at, whether you feel like a miracle or not, you are. Because the miracle of resurrection life is us. How he takes lives and changes them. And somebody had to come to me. Somebody had to love me and approach me. Some of the people in the church at Living Waters said I looked mean. I probably did because I was mean. I was mad. So I'm sure that the way that I wore my makeup and carried myself, everybody knows, Lori, that you're a good actor. <laughs> I could never see her in that, but it was good. But what was coming off from her, even in the acting, and even Cheryl was just this love of God and who they really are. But sometimes when people come into the church, they haven't received that in feeling of the baptism of the Holy Spirit yet. Amen? That's your job. That's your call. That's what God wants to bring through you. So we have to get past us, change our plans, be willing to yield, and see that you are called by him, a chosen vessel, no matter how old or how young you are, chosen by God. And you might not like it because it's interfering with your plans. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to be faithful. I don't want to learn. I don't want to read. I don't want to. I'm busy. But trust me, if you'll be obedient to the Lord, you'll walk away blessed and full. Because he's on the move. Amen. 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 Let's pray. And then I want to pray for Tiffany really quick.
So, Father, first of all, I thank you that you are the great I am, the King of kings. Come on up here, Tiffany. The Lord of lords. Just somebody go walk with her. Thank you. Father, we just thank you that you're here. You're always here. And we're going to just trust you today. Hello. And, God, we ask now that you fall in this room. Everybody's faith is strong. God, we ask you to do what only you can do for Tiffany today. So, Father, you see her eye. You see what happened to it. You see the scratch. You see the pain. And I pray in Jesus' name. Get right behind her. Thank you. There we go. Thank you. Be close, Dan. Thank you. Thank you, God. We just rebuke the pain. And we tell it to leave. There's irritation from the contact that's on her eye to protect it. I pray that it would ease up, that the nerves would ease up, that you would correct the vision. That you would heal it, Lord. We even ask for a miracle. There's a difference between a miracle and healing. We just release the power of God. Your Holy Spirit. Be filled with his Holy Spirit. Be filled with his Holy Spirit. Tiffany. Don't be afraid of it. You're worthy because he's worthy and he's in you. So we just release, Lord, together in Jesus' name, your love for your daughter. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hi. Yeah, that's a big cover. How you feeling? It's okay. It's a big, she's got a huge um, contact over her eye to protect it with some antibiotic in it. This is the second treatment because she did this a couple of weeks ago. I'm going to believe for this to only get better quickly now by the power of God. would never ask her to take that thing out of her eye, but please continue to pray for Tiffany. Amen. Do you receive this, Tiff? You do, yeah, you do. Okay, awesome. I love you too. Yep, get her back there. 